So you have what you call the essential seven. Yes. When, when you're taking on a new practice, what are they? Absolutely. Well, the essential seven are seven numbers that I know impact every aspect of the practice. And most importantly, Randy, is when progress is measured, progress is improved. So I am uh, just a beast about okay. sticking on those numbers. So the seven numbers are, the first is personal break even. In other words, what the doctor needs to take home to make life work. Um, next is the collection percentage. And amazing how a couple of tweaks in that can make a huge difference for, for a practice. Then we've got production and adjusted production. And those are two very different numbers that have a big impact on, on the practice as well. Um, the fourth is practice break even. So knowing what does it cost to run this practice? Don't they know they're break even? You know, you would certainly think so, but I've got to tell you more often than not, doctors don't know the break even. They don't know what must go to the bank every month to cover all of the expenses. And the good news is, and this is what I love being able to bring to doctors, is that once they know those numbers, and I think one of the big hesitations is it feels scary. Is yeah. it going to be bad news? Or even an attachment of judgment attached to it. You know, my bad person because my numbers are out of control and I, I never look at it that way because my objective is to let's look at them. Let's find out and oftentimes there can be simple adjustments that will put things back into line. So it doesn't need to be scary and I like walking doctors through that process. And number five is treatment acceptance. So in other words, um, when doctors presenting treatment to a patient, how much is accepted? And I define that very clearly. Accepted is what is a patient committed to pain? In other words, what are they writing the check for? What are they giving you the credit card for? And the second component is on treatment acceptance is what has the patient scheduled for? Have they scheduled to begin treatment? So in other words, treatment acceptance is not walking by the front desk saying it sounds good and I'll give you a call. So number six is unfilled hours for both doctor and hygiene. And this is a number that far too many dentists overlook. And yet this can give you some tremendous rewards, if you will. One of the biggest rewards is you're considering bringing in an associate. You're getting ready to maybe transition out of your practice, or it seems like that's what everyone's doing. So looking first at unfilled hours for, for doctor, if your schedule is not productively filled, where will the production come from for an associate? So that's one of the starting places. And on hygiene, I've seen this number save doctors that literally thousands of dollars. Because looking at hygiene unfilled hours lets you know how effective is our recare system working? Do I need to bring on additional days of hygiene or do I have too many already? So when you give them those numbers, yes. it's an eye opener to say, wow. It's always an eye opener. Okay. Yes. We've got to get this under control. Right. And, and I think the biggest eye opener is the hope that I give them. Yes, you can do something about this. Do you show them what to do? Absolutely. If I can't show them what to do, okay. then it doesn't, it doesn't make because sense. Because a lot of consultants, if I had to say mm -hmm. over the years, you know, say we measure everything, measure, measure, measure. But they, yes. I feel like where they fall short, and we've talked on the telephone, mm -hmm. you know, this is our first time meeting, but I think that you, you really give them kind of uh, some sound advice on how to turn it around. It's Absolutely. more than just measuring numbers. Right. Okay. Because you could measure numbers and say, well, there you have it. Um, you've got some problems in the practice or you've got great successes. And my approach is acknowledging where things stand, but then taking it beyond that and saying, now what are we going to do about it? So it's being responsive. It's being proactive, especially if I see trends occurring or even if they built up a head of steam, if you will, then okay. it's my opportunity to say, here's our plan of action. And along those lines, I can take that 20 year old that's at, at your front desk and may not have, of course, a lot of life experience nor experience in dentistry. And I can work with that person so that they can comfortably and confidently ask for payment from your patients or schedule an appointment that works with the flow of, of your day schedule instead of putting a, you know, surgery at, at five o'clock. And or number a, seven of the essential seven? Number seven is net new patients. And I've got to tell you, this is a number that is becoming more and more important. 15 years ago in my consulting, I didn't look at net new patients. I looked strictly- Well, define it, uh, well, working definition. Okay, so net new patients, number of new patients into your practice and subtract the attrition each month. So you might have 25 new patients in the door, but if 30 are requesting records or saying they're leaving your practice, now you're five to the negative instead of 25 to the good. Okay. And that has an impact on everything that you're planning for. How many days of hygiene do I need? Do I continue the type of marketing that I've 
I've been doing. Mm -hmm. So knowing that, um, net number is very important. And I'll tell you, this is becoming so critical with the advent of patients having new insurance companies that a doctor may not be contracted with. So if you've got patients exiting because they're on insurance company ABC, mm -hmm. how can you respond to that? Not react, you but show respond. Them Absolutely. Because it's sometimes there's confusion, of course, on the patient's part about what these benefits mean. And you still, as a patient, might be able to receive benefits in the practice and instead of saying, I must leave because he's not part of the program. So what are the steps, first step? If, if a doctor's watching this, uh, practice manager's watching this, mm -hmm. and they wanna know more about what you do, or they wanna hire you. Sure, the first step is a phone call. I want the opportunity to talk with the doctor or the practice administrator and learn what's important to them, what do they want to accomplish, because learning that helps me to know if I can even help them. They might need help with something that is not my specialty. So first, I, I, you're gonna find on those first phone calls, doctors often comment, they said, I did all the talking. Okay. And that helps me to understand what's important to them. So I'll ask a lot of questions because I don't do cookie cutter consulting. Every practice has some consistent threads through it, but there's a unique element to every single practice and that's what I want to find out. I want to find out what's important to that doctor. Maybe this is somebody who's, and I've had these situations, who says, Virginia, I don't care. I'm producing well. I'm taking home the money I need, covering my bills, but I don't know how to deal with staff issues and that's gnawing at me. I feel like I'm turning into this person that I never wanted to be. I can help with that. That's a okay. leadership issue. And you've done that before. Absolutely. And that's not something that needs to take two years. I can work with a doctor, sometimes just give them coaching advice over the phone to say, here's how you can deal with that situation. Okay. So that you can go ahead and get that assistant showing up on time because they want to. Do you know within, a, and we're going to take a break, but do you know within a few minutes on the phone where a light bulb goes off in your head and, and you almost have to control yourself and you say, boy, I could really help this person, this yes. practice. <laughs> yes, the light bulb goes off and I have to kind of hold myself back because I, this term I know can be overused, I'm passionate about what I do. I, nothing's more gratifying to me than seeing a practice situation, regardless of what it is, and being able to help resolve it and teach the doctor how to do that for the rest of his or her career. So. I get very excited because when I hear doctors talking on the phone about what's going on, it's like, yes, that we can fix that. I can take care of this. And I think primarily in that first phone call, it's hope. It's giving that doctor hope. And that's feedback that I've received throughout my consulting. You gave me hope that things can change. Good.